We're the only industrial country on the face of the earth that does not take care of the health care of its people. Consequently, we have 45 million American citizens with no insurance at all and rarely any opportunity to get it. This is one of the greatest step forwards, and I think the first thing that came into my mind about midnight on Saturday was that millions of people in this country who don't even know who we were or what we were doing are going to benefit so greatly from this. And just this past week, I heard from a young father in the district telling me that he had a, a son about six months old who was born with a, a, a birth defect, and that child would never in the United States be insurable. That's something that's been very difficult for people to really get their arms around. But up until this time this bill gets passed and signed, there is a yearly cap on how much insurance you can have. And there is a lifetime cap on how much insurance you can have. And if you reach that lifetime cap, and you can do that with severe head trauma, and I'm no doctor knows that, uh, then you again are uninsurable in the United States for the rest of your life. So many people have, have fallen into that category in the United States and they go without health care. We've heard of so many mothers who would give up cancer treatment so that they could help take care of their children. They couldn't meet monthly payments for COBRA, which is a good thing to have, but it is terribly expensive, as all my friends know. We have fought this bill not only back to Teddy Roosevelt, but I think every year of our lives. The oldest serving uh, member of the House of Representatives' father worked on this legislation when he was a congressman from Michigan. John Dingell has been there over 40 years, and every single year he has filed a bill for health care for the citizens of the United States. It has never made much sense to me that corporations wouldn't love it, because now that we have a global economy, it puts them at a terrible disadvantage in competing against other companies in the rest of the world who don't have the burden of providing health care. And most of us who have our insurance through corporations, as, as my husband and I did, I'm on his insurance, have seen that watered down, taken away uh, to such an extent. I think spouses at Kodak were let go about two years ago uh, as though we didn't matter anymore. Uh, and all those commitments that made over the lifetime of these workers. And most of that health insurance, and all my labor friends can tell you today, were done in lieu of wages. You got health care instead of wage increases. And so it has been a, a double hit on working people who gave up wages for health care then to find that they can lose it. With 14,000 Americans a day losing their jobs, a large number of them are people who are now without health care, and some, as I had said, with cancer treatment, other treatments that they simply cannot afford anymore. We have Dr. Levon and Sari, who has a uh, community health clinic uh, and is the director of the Community Health Center of Buffalo. And we're so happy to have you, Doctor. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. I just want to say that um, I'm going to tell you a few little stories. Um, my first story is with one of my seniors who we went to a health fair and I asked her if she had primary care physician. She said yes. And then I asked her about dental. She says, well, I went to the dentist, but I can't afford a dentist because I can't afford the dentures. I said, so what are you wearing in your mouth? She says, I'm wearing my dead sister's dentures. Ooh. Give you another story. I, um, a daughter brought in her mother into the health center for her checkup, and unbeknownst to us, the daughter had an unexamined lump in her breast. And of course you ask, well, why haven't you gotten that checked out? Well, I don't have any insurance. My mom has Medicare, but I have none. So I'm sitting there with a possible cancer. And let me give you a third story. We have, I just received a call maybe a couple of months ago by a couple, a husband and a wife, both worked at a car plant, both lost their jobs, both middle class, living in the suburbs. We lose our jobs, we're uninsured, both are chronic diseases. Now my husband is very sick. His diabetes are now acting up. Guess what? Nobody takes them. Why? Because they don't have any insurance. 
I just want to tell you, that's the life we're living every day. Um, I want to say I'm very pleased to be here with the Congresswoman because we cannot underscore the huge accomplishment that her and her colleagues have put forth with this Affordable Health Care for America Act. Because why it's been a long time coming, we can't stop now. First and foremost, the bill increases affordability and access to 30,000 Buffalo residents. After the health care provider, as the health care provider is a federally qualified health center, the provisions contained it reduces the unnecessary use of hospital emergency departments by encouraging health care providers that normally do not coordinate safety net services to do that. It increases funding for stability of these federally qualified health centers. It provides opportunities for the health centers to afford medical and dental residents where we can't afford them now to actually be trained in health centers. It provides funding, as the Congresswoman said, for prevention and wellness, which is overweight and obesity in our children and our families. And one of the more important things, we can't stop fighting for this public option. Because I want you to know that there's a new working poor. It's those that of us that have had jobs. And if you lost your job today, you'll be coming to a federally qualified health center. And if you have a small business, you can't afford health insurance. So I just want to say that I am very proud of our Congresswoman because it's a lot of work, but from the ground, we can't stop now, really, because I'm telling you, we live it each and every day, and our system is dysfunctional, but our people deserve it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a short, just a brief personal story I'd like to share. Actually, uh, uh, mid-December would be the second, uh, excuse me. <laughs> second anniversary of my brother's death. Uh, my brother worked for, and I apologize, I just oh, gotta take a deep breath. I'm used to being in front of union meetings, I can handle that. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> but you know, my brother worked at a small company in downstate New York, been there a number of years, had minimal health coverage. Uh, I got notified, I was actually in New York City, got a call from my wife that he had uh, passed away in a car accident. But upon doing an autopsy, it was found that he had infectious disease that attacked his heart due to, due to uh, dental issues. They had no dental coverage, could not go to the dentist, take care of uh, you know, uh, those type of issues, and actually that's what caused his death. His inability, or inability to afford dental coverage or to even go to a dentist. I mean, and that's one, that, that's a personal story of mine, but I'm sure there's thousands of Americans that have similar, similar stories to share with us. And that's why this legislation is, is just so fantastic. And I am so, I cannot express enough, so happy to be here today when this takes effect. And I certainly want to thank, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of every man and woman, what labor, whether you go to work in blue jeans or a blue suit, uh, you know, this, this legislation is critical to every American out there. And I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Slaughter, or I like to call her Louise. Louise. Uh, <laughs> I like to call her Louise for her great leadership in this effort and her continued support and leadership moving this forward. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. All of it's fear mongering. <laughs> and you're going to, I, I've never heard anything like it. It was embarrassing to me, beyond belief, that any American would believe that the government of the United States would kill their grandmother. <laughs> I mean, we had a woman who stood up on the floor and said the government's going to, we're going to kill its people. I mean, this is the same government that um, in September uh, 12, 2001, couldn't do anything wrong. I mean, everything we did was right. 45% of Americans are covered by government health insurance today. That's nearly half. The Veterans Administration, Indian Health, Medicaid, and Medicare. Now, I've never had anybody say to me, take my Medicare away from me. I've had a lot of people say, I don't want government insurance and take, don't touch my Medicare. It's kind of touchy to try to explain to them that that is government insurance. <laughs> but we had the same thing. It was the same debate with Clinton when we did Clinton Health. They put out the word that if you went to the wrong doctor, it could cost you $10,000 and maybe a jail term. I mean, why would people buy that? 